Hello kind people of the YouTube land. Why is my Tahoe making that? Crazy. Light on. Anyway, I did uh, three miles on the treadmill and now I'm heading down to the church. A couple of interesting things that are going to be happening today. One, I'm going to do some more recording for the uh, Bibles. I have enough to do maybe two more videos uh three more videos excuse me and uh then i need to get those bibles cleaned up and this afternoon our new piano is coming so from a small church pastor i want to share a little bit today about this piano and uh some of the upgrades that we've done since we first moved in here in jordan having a building is quite the blessing I've seen many, many places where they did not have a building and you would meet in somebody's home. The reason that it is such a great blessing is uh, you have space to meet as needed. You can put together some things that will allow you to hold services better, like a sound system, a uh, dedicated area for preaching. And so many, many blessings come from a church being able to have its own building and space. And uh, over the many years of church history, you see how those buildings have been uh, helpful. Everything from cathedrals to, uh, there was one country I was in where the pastor's uh, house had an extra building or an extra room onto the side. That was the church, but that room was dedicated to the church stuff so it had uh, a podium for speaking and it had a sound system uh, but it was its dedicated space uh, and when I was doing research um, for a paper I don't remember I think it was a, a paper for worship in uh, churches and things of that sort and it talked about how the building can add to and have an architecture for worship space and uh, all of that is, is very, very helpful. Uh, I say all of that because sometimes you just have to make do with what you have. Um, not every gathering of Christians, every church, a local church gathering, has uh, those types of things. So you can meet in somebody's home. You can meet in, uh, I know some churches that are, that are meeting in schools uh, or any other public space where they're able to gather together. Uh, now our particular setting, our church, was uh, an office building. It was built uh, as an office building and you can see this door right here behind me, the front door. There used to be a hallway that went all the way straight to the back door and when I moved here uh, they had done some renovations um, to make this space a little more usable. So the sanctuary space was here, but it wasn't like it is now. They also had uh, living spots in the building for the pastor. So the pastor lived here in this building as well as uh, used it as the church. And over the years, we've done uh, a few upgrades and modifications to help us, and uh, we continue to do that. Um, but we do it as funds become necessary or become available and needs become necessary. Uh, I've always uh, battled this uh, internal struggle about uh, if you build it, they will come versus uh, overbuilding and uh, putting yourself in a bad spot because you you built before the need was there. Um, and you listen to all of the experts, and I think all of them have great advice. Uh, you don't want to wait until the need is already here before you build that space or make that space uh, useful for whatever it is that you have a need for, uh, because that tends to stifle growth. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have a limited amount of finances, and we can't just spend willy-nilly expecting those needs to come. So you have to balance uh, real 
needs that are coming versus uh, just perceived needs. And that's always been an internal struggle for me, especially in the small church setting. One of the first questions that I'm usually asked when we talk about updating and doing some different things. Wow, that looks like, uh, is that a fire or is that dust? I don't know. But one of the first things that's usually asked when we talk about upgrading, like we're doing with our piano, we had a mm, regular mechanical piano and we've updated to this electronic one that's being delivered today. And the people say, uh, not people of the church, but people in general say, well, what, what, why upgrade and why do that? Um, two main reasons that I think small churches need to consider upgrading sound system and uh, screens, all that type of stuff. Number one is uh, it opens up your options. When we first got here, we didn't have any musicians. Uh, we didn't have anybody who could play and lead us in worship. So we had to use tracks, and we were extremely limited because the sound system, we didn't have one. And so when we finally did get a sound system and started adding in some tracks and some singing, um, that created more opportunities. And now what we're doing is we're putting this electronic piano on, and it... Um, it gives us opportunity to uh, better equalize the sound, add instruments so we can add guitars, we can add all that stuff because we're not trying to work around that old piano and have it mic'd and get all that stuff going. Anyway, um, it provides multiple, multiple opportunities. Uh, the second reason is uh, churches are supposed to be progressing. We are supposed to be doing more and more and being uh, involved in the things around us. And uh, I think it is a hindrance to modern people and especially the next generation to think of church as stuck in the old days. Uh, a lot of things progressed uh, in the late uh, 1900s uh, so between the 60s, 70s, and 80s, there was a lot of progress in churches and things that happened. But then churches kind of stopped there. Uh, they, they brought themselves up to that point. And I think it's important to stay... Uh, the word is not relevant because the church is always relevant. But it's to stay modern. You have to match, to some extent, uh, the things that people know and understand. So, for example, I'm not saying we look like the culture, but what I'm saying is uh, when you go into a different culture, uh, you should be able to uh, match the language. You should be able to match some of the traditions in that area. Uh, when I went to one particular country, uh, when you go into their churches, you take your shoes off at the door because that is the practice there. The men sat separate from the women because that was the general practice there. The church was in their language. Uh, the music that they did was their music. And I think that needs to happen in the church also. We live in a time of technology. People expect to be able to, to give electronically. They expect to be able to see the, the words up on the screen and not have to open a hymnal. They expect to hear music that is a little more um, used to what they're hearing. Uh, do we still play hymns here? Yes, because I think it's important for people to be exposed to that. But we also sing modern worship songs also. And uh, by, by keeping up to date, that's what we're, we're doing. We're continually reevaluating ourselves and make, make sure that we connect with the, the people that we're trying to reach. Uh, it's always a delicate balance because the church should be radically different than the culture around us. Um, but that is in reference to morality, behavior, uh, the things that we're focused on. Alrighty, the new piano is here. I want to show you the old piano. This was our old piano here. I'm not sure where the church got it. This piano was here when we moved here, although there was nobody to play it. Sharon played a little bit here and there, and then when we were able to do tracks, we moved over to tracks. Uh, the Lord provided us an excellent, very talented piano player, and she was playing it, 
and we redesigned the stage for her to be up here and then we added drums uh, and so now we have our new piano ain't it purdy it's a yamaha something but we are super excited about that we run it through the sound system uh, and it offers us a, quite a bit more as ter in terms of uh, options and things that we can mix it with and how we can how we can use this um, but an electric piano never has to be tuned it may need some maintenance here and there but it doesn't need to be tuned you don't have to worry about the temperature you don't have to worry about moisture all the things that were problems with the regular piano uh, humidity made a difference having it tuned every year it was just so many problems and so this one now we can just turn it on and uh, worship so we're gonna have to decide how we're gonna to lay this out but uh, that's just the consistent steady upgrades um, that we're doing another thing that this piano allows us to do is uh, the lady who plays our piano for us also teaches piano lessons and so it's a service that we can help provide to her as she provides service to our community so we are super excited about Sunday okay I've been rambling today thank you guys for joining me uh, you guys uh, really offer me a lot of encouragement i love the feedback and i love being able to uh, talk to you guys so we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>